Hey, Derek Yale here, and uh, I want to give you a quick outsourcing lesson. And uh, what prompted me to do this was uh, a lot of questions I've been getting from my members as of lately about uh, outsourcing on Odesk and Elance. And uh, what I'm seeing is a lot of new entrepreneurs going to these really powerful outsourcing platforms, but not getting good results. And then when they come to me, I unfortunately have to tell them it's not the contractor's fault, it's their fault because they went about it all wrong. So I want to share a couple simple strategies with you to make sure you get the best results out of Odesk or Elance or any outsourcing platform you use. Now, the very first thing I want to point out here is the quality versus value. Now, we all know we can go to Odesk, Elance, sites like that, and we can get uh, jobs done for a fraction of what it would typically cost us to actually hire an employee to come and do that for us and that's why we love these sites and uh, that's great but if you go in to a site like Odesk post a job and purely shop based on the lowest price I guarantee you you're never going to get a result you're happy with because there's a lot of contractors out there that don't have the skills to complete the job but they're gonna bit they're gonna lowball just to try and get anything and they're not going to do a good job for you okay so when I post a job on o o Odesk or Elance Here's what I do. I post the job, I walk away for 48 hours, I let all the applications come in. Then I go back into my account and I start filtering them. But my first pass of filtering the good candidates, I don't look at price at all. The very first thing I do is I look at qualifications, okay? I wanna look at, she, do they have all the qualifications? I wanna look at their portfolio, depending on what the job is. I wanna look at feedback, okay? How many hours do they have? What have other employers said? said about them. So the most important thing I'm looking for initially is quality. Are they a quality contractor that has the right qualifications to do the job for me? Then once I've shortlisted my candidates, then I can start shopping for value. But the reality is, is you can pay, you can go for the cheapest guy out there, but if he doesn't have the qualifications or skills to do the job, you're just throwing good money after bad, so don't bother. So shop for quality, then value. Now, the other mistake I see too many entrepreneurs making is they post jobs that have a very specific outcome, okay? So for example, design a web page and the job is over. Design a graphic, the job is over. Uh, write a sales letter the job is over, okay? So jobs have a very specific outcome and deliverable, and then it ends. Now, those should be fixed price jobs, but I see lots of people, because they've never done it, they don't know how long it should take, they post them as hourly. And the problem with hourly jobs is you're not motivating your contractor to get it done as quickly as possible. And secondly, that can lead to big bills ongoing and a deliverable that you're not happy with and you overpaid for. So my rule of thumb is, is if I have a job that has a very specific deliverable and end date, it's always going to be a fixed price. We're going to agree that when this contractor delivers this product or this, uh, this deliverable, they're going to get paid X amount. Now, if I don't know how much I should be charging for that job, what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna search around and see what other employers on those websites are charging for those jobs, and I'm gonna use that as my benchmark. And then I'm going to post that fixed price, and remember, you're gonna get people that are gonna come in and bid all over the place. That's just what you've recommended. Some people bid lower, some people bid higher. Maybe you do get somebody that's gonna bid lower and be qualified, great. But the bottom line is, is never hire people on hourly unless it's truly an ongoing job. So, people I hire on hourly are things like virtual assistants that have an ongoing job where every day they have specific tasks they need to do and I know how long those tasks should take. The bottom line is, is if you hire somebody to do something hourly and you don't know how long it takes, you're setting yourself up to potentially kind of get screwed, all right? Now, the last mistake, and this is probably the absolute biggest mistake that results in the most failed contracts is not setting your expectations. It seems too many entrepreneurs believe that these contractors should read minds. They do not, okay? Whenever I hire a contractor to do anything for me, I'm going to sit down and give them as explicit details as possible, 
okay? If I want them to design a graphic, I'm gonna try and sketch it out as best I can and maybe even scan it in even though I can't draw. Uh, I'm gonna give them examples of what I like. I'm gonna give them very specific details on colors, on wording. If I want a web page designed, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna draw it out. I'm gonna mock it up in a wireframe so they understand where everything needs to go. I'm gonna send them examples of sites I like and tell them specifically what to use. Now, here's the reality. That takes time. I'll spend a couple hours pulling together details to give to a contractor. But the fact is, if I don't, they're going to deliver what they think is best. And the likelihood of them creating something I'm happy with, pretty slim. So, no matter what you hire somebody to do, no matter what the job is, you need to sit down and give them as much detail as possible. Spending five minutes writing them a quick note, sorry guys, not enough. You need to map it out step by step. And if you do, the likelihood of getting a deliverable that you're happy with shoots through the roof. And if they don't deliver something you're happy with, but you literally mapped it out like I just explained, then you can go back to them and say, you didn't deliver what I said. Now, if you gave them vague instructions, you can't argue that. And finally, make sure you set a specific deadline, okay? It must be done by this date, and these are my expectations. If you miss one of those, they can either drag it out or they get to the deadline and they deliver what they thought was okay and it wasn't. So, once again, make sure they're qualified. Make sure you have a set fixed price and deadline agreed upon before they start the job and make sure you give them as detailed instructions as possible possible. And in fact, for longer jobs, what I like to do is I like to set milestones where I'll say, okay, by this day, you're going to have this done. By this day, you're going to have this done. And I want to see it. Now, anybody who's managed employees in an office, this is typically how you manage them. So why would it be any different with contractors that are in another country? The more detail you give, the more successful you're going to be, the better results you're going to get. If you follow those rules, outsourcing can work for anybody. And then eventually, you will find contractors that you build relationships with, that you trust, and that's great because you could give them a job and know they're just gonna do a great job on it. But when you're getting started, you got to follow these rules. If you do so, you can have massive success using sites like Odesk, like Elance and stuff like that. But if you're going to be lazy, you're not going to give expectations, you're going to shop for value, you're not going to be happy. So hope you learned something here and uh, happy outsourcing.